I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mastering Organic Synthesis. In the last video, I asked if you could solve the synthesis of what's called Prozac using the starting material depicted and any other starting material that contains seven or fewer carbons. If you haven't had a chance, try to figure it out independently and then resume the video to check your answers. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another problem to solve for our next video. In this synthesis, you were asked if you started with this para trifluoromethylphenol how could you synthesize Prozac using any other starting material that contains seven or fewer carbons? Well, obviously in this structure, here is our piece that came from the starting material that you were given. And since I can use any other reagent that contains seven or fewer carbons, I know that benzene has six and this carbon would be number seven. So my starting material is actually gonna be benzaldehyde, which is a benzene ring that contains an aldehyde group on it. And I chose aldehyde because there are several different types of reactions that I can do to extend the length of my carbon chain at aldehydes. Specifically, if we use a Grignard reagent and use an acidic workup, then I know that I can extend the carbon chain and turn this into an OH group at this carbon position. So if I use a Grignard reagent, like a magnesium chloride, then I know that I can have a carbon chain that contains this alkene on it, adding at this position to give us an alcohol and leaving us behind with the rest of the carbon chain, including this alkene. Once I fill in my pi bonds into my benzene ring, this would be the product of this transformation. And then now I see that this alcohol position is where this ether needs to be from my other starting material. And this means that I need to figure out a way to transform this alcohol into being an ether from here. And one way to do that would be a substitution reaction. However, alcohols can't substitute other alcohols, but they can substitute alkyl halides. So if I use a group like thionyl chloride, then I can turn this alcohol into a chloride giving us a position at which we can perform that substitution reaction and also knowing that all I need to do now is deprotonate this with some base. So if I deprotonate this reactant then that's going to leave behind this alkoxide or phenoxide which will do a substitution reaction here. So all I have to do is to combine these two reagents in order to add on this chain. So once I do that, that's gonna give me most of the way towards my final product. So I'm gonna have already my benzene ring here. I've now added on this ether that contains the parafluoro trifluoromethyl group. And then all that remains is this alkene, which I eventually need to turn into this secondary amine. So one way that I might do that is if I take something like a ketone or an aldehyde and I do a reductive amination. And the only way that I know to turn alkenes into ketones or aldehydes is actually ozonolysis. So if we add O3, remember that's going to cleave this bond and leave behind an oxygen. So that gives me the product where now I have generated an aldehyde at this position. So now I have my CO double bond and the rest of the molecule looks mostly the same where I'm gonna end up looking like this. And from here, a way that we can make secondary amines, which is what we need in our final product, is called reductive amination. And specifically those conditions, I'm gonna need this amine. So I'm gonna take H2N with my methyl group on it, so methylamine. And in this example, the most common types of re reducing reagents that you use for reductive amination is gonna be like sodium cyanoborohydride. So in this case, I can do a reductive amination. Remember that you also need an acid catalyst to protonate here. This is how we get our reductive amination to generate our final product of Prozac. So to recap, the first step is to take benzaldehyde and form a new carbon-carbon bond using a Grignard reagent, giving us an alcohol. Subsequently, we can substitute the alcohol for a chloride using thionyl chloride, bringing in our initial starting material. If we deprotonate it with a base to make a phenoxide, then it will do a substitution reaction at that alkyl chloride position. Next, ozonolysis allows us to turn that alkene into an aldehyde, which we can then use to do reductive amination using methylamine and sodium cyanoborohydride to synthesize Prozac. Again, thank you so much for being here. For our next video, I actually have two different synthetic transformations for you to solve. Can you figure out the multi-step synthesis for each of these transformations? I'll see you in the next one.